This is The Locker Room on News 3. Well, Phoebus and Oscar Smith square off tomorrow, but for everybody else, the regular season has come to a close. Thanks so much for joining us tonight here on The Locker Room. We have a jam-packed show coming to you tonight with cameras all across the seven cities and beyond. So settle in, let's have some fun. And we'll start in Williamsburg with our 757 showdown. Last year, Warhill beating Lafayette for the first time ever. Could the Lions follow it up? Or could the Rams get revenge? News 3's Zach Staten tells us who will emerge as Bay Rivers champ. Mark, it's a tale as old as time, a winner-take-all duel between two bitter rivals. Either Lafayette continues a decade of dominance in the Bay Rivers district, or Warhill can slay the Rams for just the second time in program history. Each and every one of you out there on that field is going to have to sacrifice tonight. You're going to get hit. That expectation tonight, and that's to leave this field with the victory. Who walks away with bragging rights and a district title? Visitors leading seven nothing early. Jalen Pretlow with his fingerprints all over this one like a blur. He darts his way in from 40 yards out. It's a 14 nothing lead for Lafayette in the first quarter. The running game continues its dominance in the second quarter. This time with a big man, Demarcus Lawrence, bruising his way in from seven yards out for the score. It's 21 nothing. He had three touchdowns on the night. Or he'll find some life in the passing game. Chase O'Neill evading pressure, finds Jaden McAdoo over the middle. He breaks free for a 45-yard strike and score. It's 21-7, the Lions getting some momentum. But Pretlow stumps it immediately on the next drive. Takes just 47 seconds for the Navy commit to find his second touchdown of the night. Lafayette uses 275 rushing yards to barrel its way over Warhill. 49-7 the final. A lot of people don't. It feels great. It feels great to bring that back home with us and that it, it, it should stay with us from now on, from here on out. Well, I've told the kids they've come out the last few weeks like they've been coming out. You know, and it's a rivalry game right across. I mean, schools are a mile away from each other through the woods. So, you know, I told him it was going to be an energy and a heart game early, and it was. And at least for one more year, the Bay Rivers District goes through Lafayette. The Rams have won at least a share of every district championship except for one since 2011. Here in Williamsburg, Zach Staten, News 3 Sports. All right, thanks so much, Zach. Well, meanwhile, a clash of the Titans on the private circuit. Atlantic Shores and Portsmouth Christian both coming off state titles and squaring off before going for their respective repeats. Great atmosphere in the Patriots welcoming last year's champs for extra support. Boy, do they need it. Down 20 to 7, and the Pats defense getting pressure on Micah Lance in his own end zone. Third and 15. This is going to be a safety. Now 20 to 9 with 3.23 to go in the half. The Seahawks offense. Gets right before the break. Lance with a minute to play. Delivering a strike over the middle to Marlon Johnson here. He'll dive forward to snag the touchdown. Lance throwing three scores in the first half, making it 26-9, 26-16, your final. Let's head to the beach. Green Run looking for back-to-back 10-0 -back regular seasons. Hosting Lanstown, opening drive for the Stallions. Kevin White to Jaden Anderson for the TD strike. Green Run's first on the scoreboard. More from where that came from. White's going to show off the legs now. Dives for the pylon here to tally six more. Stallions double their lead. Not much offense for the Eagles tonight, as many have experienced against Green Run. Stallions go to 10-0 with the 42-14 victory. Kings Fork nipping at Warwick's heels for the top spot in Region 4A. Taking on Nansman River, first play from scrimmage. Javon Ford has done it all year long. Here rips off a 43-yard run that includes some speed and a nifty move. Would lead to a touchdown to make it 6-0 Bulldogs. Defense showing up early as well. Ronald Rhodes gets in the backfield, tallies the sack. Second quarter now, more offense. Kalitri Boyd, three-yard score coming up here. 14-0 dogs at the half, but get this. Nansman River storming all the way back. Shocking Kings Fork, 21-20 in overtime. Huge win for the Warriors. Well, still ahead, Cox has put together a strong campaign. Would Kellum send the Falcons into the playoffs on a loss? That's coming up right after this.
All right, thanks to the Deep Creek cheerleaders there. Well, meanwhile, Cox has not had to bounce back from a loss very much this season. The Falcons falling for just the second time this year and can lock up its best 10 game schedule since 2018 with a victory. Kellum standing in the way, hoping to gain some ground in class six. Let's pick things up with Cox up 17 nothing and adding to it, Isaac Mahalip comes up with the pick, takes it all the way back for the score 24 nothing. Kellum trying to chip away though. Here the running back will break off a nice run for a 44 yard gain, but the Knights could not turn it into points and the Falcon defense will keep the pressure on. Jordan Cooper will come up with their third pick of the half, would lead to another touchdown. Cox should get the three seed in 5A with a 31-6 win. On the peninsula, Woodside and Kikatan meeting, hoping to improve their respective playoff standings. Warriors making some plays. Breon Melvin threads the needle to Josh Thomas. He makes the grab. Nice spark for the offense. Woodside would have its own spark in the form of Paul Stephen Davis. He gets the outside and rattles off a big game, but neither team would score in the first. Kikatan finds the end zone first in the second. Thomas carries it in for six. High scoring affair, but is Kikitan grabbing the victory 49-35. Indian River entering the day fifth in the region 5A power rankings. Braves at Grassfield tonight and some sparks right off the bat. Matthias Kaiser returning the opening kickoff gets through the coverage going all the way. Grizzlies take a 7-0 lead. Braves answer later in the first. Wildcat formation. Davion Turns takes it in from five yards out. Indian River ties it up. Then the Braves pull out some trickery. Tyler Allison over to Omari Talley. He'll air it out to a wide open Jesse Fox. Indian River will hold off Grassfield 23-16. Mori will be the top seed in Region 5B, taking on crosstown rival Norview. Pilots showing off the speed, and it's Trenile Jones. He'll find the edge, turns the corner, find some open field, and he's going to cut back across, take it all the way to the house. Norview would trail 26-14 at the end of the third quarter, but as they have all year, the Commodores respond. Mario Miller keeps it himself, gets through the D. Mori ends the regular season on a win, 46-14. How about Deep Creek trying to secure a 500 regular season? Hornets hosting Great Bridge. 14-zip Deep Creek in the second. Wildcats show some life. Tristan Ballinger takes the handoff and takes it in for the score. Trims it to 14-6. Deep Creek answering. The Hornets march downfield. Brandon Nesbitt, he's been solid all season, finds Paydirt. Deep Creek widens the lead again. Then special teams coming up big. Hornets charge through to block the punt. They would hold the advantage at the break. Double their score to win, 42-6. Back to the Bay Rivers, Bruton and York meeting at Bailey Field. Falcons strike first. Nathan Wagner decides to keep it himself. Breaks free, goes in untouched for the score. York takes the seven zip lead. Home team just getting started. This time, Brian Burks showing off the skills and the speed. Will fight through the last few Panthers here to get in for six. 14 nothing. Bruton not going away though. Trey Corbin has been a force all year. That continues tonight with a long score, but way too much York. Falcons grab the win, 48-19 the final. Lake Taylor at J.R. Tucker in Richmond. Titans down 6-0 early, but come roaring back. Drew Rogers scores from 17 yards out. Lake Taylor up 7-6 now, and would control things from there. Jameer Freeman going to his top target, Elijah Washington. They connect for the 33-yard touchdown. 14-6 Titans, but wait, there's more. This time, Freeman the pitch to Teron Washington. Another TD. Titans go to 9-1, 61-13. Your final still ahead. Hickory one spot out of the playoffs. Can the Hawks help their chances with a win at Lakeland? Stay with us. We're back after this. All right, Hickory on the outside looking in the 5A playoff picture. Hawks looking for a chance facing Lakeland. Pick it up third quarter. Hickory stepping on the gas. Owen Kelly to Regan Inns for the 26-yard touchdown strike, 27-7. Next Hawk possession, Cavalier defense showing off. Desimey and Council in particular, nice pick there, but too much from Hickory tonight. The Kelly to Inns connection working once again. Hawks soar 33-7 the final. Another good battle in the Bay Rivers, Grafton and Pocosin. Let's pick it up, tied at seven in the fourth. Adonis Stowers put the Islanders on front. Grafton would block the point after, so it's 13-7, and the Clippers take advantage. Ben, ben Sampson takes the ball in the end around, gets to the sideline, kiss him goodbye. He'll take it all the way to the house. Grafton takes the 14-13 lead on the extra point. So now, less than a minute to go, Pocosin looking to work down the field, but Macal Barnett 
goes up and gets the game-winning pick. Woo! Grafton wins a thriller, 14 to 13. Booker T. Washington and Manor wrapping up the regular season. Opening drive for the Bookers. Frederick Fuller aims for the end zone, but Javion Whitfield gets a finger on the ball at the very last second on fourth down. Bookers come up empty. Ensuing Mustang drive also gets the fourth down, and they don't handle it as well as they did on defense. Turnover on downs. Booker's in prime position. Another fourth down now, this time at the Mustang 22. Fuller heaves a prayer to the back of the end zone where Trenton Pittman waiting gets tattooed on the catch. But that's good even on Sundays. 22 yards to get the Bookers on the board. They roll 38-7. Back to the private circuit now. Nans win Suffolk on the road at St. Anne's Belfield in Charlottesville. NSA gets on the board with the Isaiah Furman touchdown pass here. This ties things up. Stab would be a worthy opponent tonight. Check out the moves on the Austin Williford touchdown. Hey, he goes to St. Anne's, but we can still enjoy this touchdown down here. Nice work there. But more from Nansman and Suffolk, and it would be plenty. Parker Green will come away with a touchdown catch over here. NSA nips St. Anne's 40 to 37. We're back after this. All right, let's take a look at some scores from around the area. How about the beach? Tallwood beat Ocean Lakes 42-27. Also, Kemsville gets a final tune-up for the playoffs, 57-10 over FC. Still on the beach, Salem pitching the shutout over Princess Anne and Churchland shutting out Granby as well. That's going to wrap up tonight's edition of The Locker Room. Remember, if you join us late, be sure to check out the sports page of WTKR.com. We'll have all your scores and highlights there in one spot for you. Thanks so much for joining us. For Zach Staten, I'm Mark Davis. Good night, everybody. Enjoy your weekend.